with spyware. <laughs> As long as it's mechanical, nothing else matters. Just to be mechanical. So I can slam on it. Below looks cold and winter gray. Torn down the wall. Grocery list. Checks. What happened here? It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. There's always a little something in the fridge. Indeed. Breakthrough. Call the Mama Dakwa. Call the Mama Dakwa. It's not only your eardrums that register sound anymore. Your very skin has become an organ of hearing. Looking for a whisper, light and low. A god who's very, very silent. Nothing escapes you. A cockroach in the other room. A candy wrapper falling on dry grass. A drunk falling from a chair in a bar 20 meters away. In fact, you haven't heard the call du Mama Dakwa, but you have discovered that you have amazing hearing. It must be the only part of you the alcohol hasn't drowned out. Keep listening. Golden ear, plus 3 to perception, minus 1 to encyclopedia. It's a worthy trade off. Definitely worthy trade off. I'm fine with it. Days of coldest April. Sixteen days of coldest April. Interact. In your hands, you hold sixteen days of coldest April by Yekatina Dar. The cover image shows a row of concrete apartments above which span a black and white rainbow. Indeed. The book is unusually heavy in your hands, as though the cover were lined with lead. You flip through the book, the pages are thinner than you realized, and the type quite small and tightly set. It's nearly 600 pages long. Real art is dense and difficult. If it didn't feel like you had to wrestle a suicidal bear to get through it, you weren't really reading. Look at the back cover. The back cover is dominated by a black and white photograph of the author. What does she look like? She can't be much older than her mid-thirties in this photograph. And yet, from this cover, the eyes of a sad old woman stare back at you. Start reading. In cold, detached prose, the author describes a scene from one of the Hugo Grad riots in the twenties. Youths overturn motor carriages and set trash cans ablaze while heavily armored guardsmen dash in and disperse them in a flurry of baton blows. The Yugo Grad riots took place from 27 to 29. Fueled by ethnic unrest and the state's repressive tactics, these events are often seen as marking the end of a brief period of liberalization known as the Yugo Grad Spring. Like all such periods, it is frequently memorialized in art and literature. As ethnic tensions run wild, a pair of young lovers meet each other on the street. Somehow, in the middle of all the chaos, they manage to lock arms and look into each other's eyes. It would physically hurt you to keep reading. Are you sure? Yeah. 
They go through a brief and somewhat awkward love affair. And in the end, they betray each other and succumb to the absurdity of Guardian life. The man becomes a lens grinder, completely abandoning his former existence. He toils through the daily drudgery at the Lenka Polyfabricate. Happiness and fulfillment have eluded him his whole life. And in the end, he has nothing to do but dedicate himself to the craft. She spends the next several decades standing at a conveyor in a Sosnovor fish processing plant. The smell of fish guts slowly seeps into her hair and skin, as every single one of her dreams dies, one by one. The memory of their short time spent together tortures the former lovers ceaselessly until the end of their days. Years pass in solitude, their bodies growing ever more decrepit. As life leaves their remains between the soil sheets, their final thoughts are filled with regret. Put the book away. That was useless. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. Sounded like a woman, a woman's shoes. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Let's go. We don't have. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Yeah, do it. You seem committed to it, so go on. The shackle snaps like a twig, and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. Master investigator, you just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? It's my duty as a cop to investigate every square inch of this world. Attaboy, the world's secrets were made for yeah, you. The thought. They wait patiently for you to uncover them. What's the thought? <laughs> Unlock. Yes. The Jevrak Shuffle. Internalize. One hour, five minutes. Atrocities of capital and such. Revolutionaries posing with guns. Revolutionaries love to pose with their guns. <laughs> Correct. Black gun poster or white star. Nine millimeter bullet. Conceptualization. The nine millimeter bullet, yes. What's that? A plaster cast bust depicts a middle aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Marzov. The white star, the photos on the wall, 
I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communal. How fitting. The lieutenant raises a brow. Thank you for sharing this wonderful opinion on human sexuality. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. I think there will be all the doors. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. Yes. The iconography of communism, in other words. Not our communism. <laughs> Well, whatever. The communists are out here. I'll keep my armistice handy, detective. He doesn't actually reach for his gun. Let's play the symbol. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. Why is the star upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. Why white? Because white is the color of peace. What does it keep walking me? Communism is the ideology of gutless intellectuals and clueless university students. They don't care about the real working man. Working man. We've been everywhere, we've done everything there is. All we can do now is the balcony, I guess. Someone is watching from within. What's that? Can't. Yo, he owes me the time and kept this. Apartment 29. Apartment 30. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? The smoker on the balcony. This is why we are here, right? He might know some- Don't worry. It's mostly all still here. You can remember things. You got this. Okay, tomorrow, 9 p.m. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow. He's probably gone for today. Fine, there's the corpse remaining. Edward. What else? The museum. Don't know in which order should I go for it. Probably the museum first. Then we can beg the corpse.
culmination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline, fired from the water, a straight shot into Revachol. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. The wind blows through your hair. The sea breeze cuts around you, high on the balcony as you stare over the edge of the sea. In the ocean. The waves of the Martinez Inlet roll over the fallen remains of the building. The dark waters obscure the better part of the remains. What didn't fall into the ocean was used as scrap. What wasn't used as scrap was thrown into the ocean. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to twelve once did. Restoration has failed. What the shilling took out was never rebuilt. Who did this? A fleet. The combined armies of Occident and Grad, with Mesk volunteers, a five-nation army, hundreds of vessels. They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Do you know who shelled our city? The coalition, but that was a long time ago. I think we should move on. It's chilly up here. From the eyes of a seagull, a nest of brown hair not worth the 50-foot dive. From a pedestrian on the dock, a rugged man staring out to sea, mere feet from fatality. From a guest on the balcony of the whirling in rags, a silhouette imposing. Nothing else. Mm. 
a little bit. Where do we go? We go to the museum. Then we bag the corpse. Then we clean the boots. In that order. I need to go to Kuno also. I got some Fetamen. Maybe I can do that first, because it's gonna be quick. We do Kuno first. Does Kuno care? Talk to Manana. So? Told me you promised to sick the pigs on him. Yeah, so? Kuno did sick the pigs on him? Kuno's a man of his word. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno should move on. I will remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here, grief and the Kuno. After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. The care of a drug situation. All right, so you got Kuno's kilo. Here is how we do it. First, you give Kuno Kuno's kilo. Then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way, street way. You're gonna ask how I got past your dad. Where on the street is? You sent your little friend in dressed as a hooker, distraction style. That's some sick shit. Not a single muscle moves on the lieutenant's face. Kuno wants to hear all about it, but first we split the kilo, then we shoot the shit. By kilo, you mean gram, right? Kuno knows what Kuno means. Kuno means gram. Uh, I'm keeping it and I'm doing it all myself. Don't give it to Kuno. Alright, you fucking juggy. Kuno knew you tried that sneaky pig shit on him. Tell him, Kuno! Kuno's got brains. This shit doesn't surprise Kuno. So Kuno's gonna give you one more chance. Know this, pig. Shit is major. Major fucking choice, pig. Kuno won't take this shit lightly. The pieces are moving, pig. This is fucking domino shit. It's hard to see how not giving a boy a bag of amphetamine would cause some catastrophic cascade response. Hard to see, but easy to feel. Somehow, this will change things. Tick, 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 tick. Decision time. What's it gonna be? You gonna fuck the Kuno? What happens if we give him that? All right, now we're talking. Whoa, that's heavy. There you go. More than half in there. Kuno's fucking honorable like that. There is no movement on the lieutenant's face. As he stared. Now tell me, how the fuck are you still alive, pig? Tons of unpaid utility bills there. Fuck right there, where? 
fucking three years or some shit? You can guess. Let me guess, Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about them. Yeah, that's right. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about that electricity and light shit. Just wants to pound on people and drink. You need to live somewhere else. That's right, it's a shithole. Kuno's gonna move underground, Leroyim shit, ancient shit. Kuno's gonna live in a fucking catacomb. <laughs> yeah, in a tomb, Kuno! There was a textbook with your name on it. Yeah, so fucking what? It says Kuno, not Kuno. It's Kuno the Reuter. Fuck are you talking to Kuno about that kiddie shit? That's uh, a lame name, Kuno. Kuno knows it's fucking lame. That's why Kuno changed it. You can't fuck with Kuno. Kuno, I met your dad. Yeah, you do some sambo shit, sneak in. Is the hooker thing real? It wasn't you said Kim dressed up as a hooker full drag, distracted them. The lieutenant flashes you a sharp look, but doesn't say anything. Only his tightly closed lips betray the effort keeping silent takes him. Fuck out of here. Kuno made that shit up to demean you. <laughs> that they have a good sleep, that they? Look, pigs. Kuno gets it. You don't want to talk about it. Close quarters combat shit. Kuno doesn't want to talk about it either. Combat trauma shit. What? His posture changes. The swaying rooster motion stops for a second. Then he gets it going again. Fuck right. Kuno's dad was sleeping like a bum. Kuno told you. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. Fucking breaking and entering shit. That's nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno knew this. Kuno's fucking violent fiend dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you have a way in. Narrow window. Kuno window. Kuno window. Kuno window. What are you trying to do? Get the Kuno to stop. Kuno's just getting it on. Keep your ass together, Kuno. You don't have to be scared of him anymore. Kuno's not fucking trying to be tough. This shit is real. Kuno's fucking violent dad's gonna be a vegetable. Kuno knows that shit. Stroke shit. Stomach fucked up and... Kuno's gonna go out like that too. Gonna be just like Kuno's violent dad. Speed shit. Crime shit. Fucking on the bed. Go out West Revishaw style. Stop saying all this sad shit, Kuno. Fuck are you talking, sad? <laughs> Kuno's got hard shit, death shit, nothing shit. Chances are you're gonna turn into that. Fuck right I am. Now get your nun ass out of here before Kuno fucks it dead. You think cause you brought Kuno one gram of speed your friends now? Turn into... Kuno ain't turning into shit. Kuno is... Kuno is that shit. Kuno won! Oh, you won, Kuno! The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we got plans! Yeah, pig. This shit is... Kuno doesn't... Okay, we've seen what happens. And now... We're gonna take all of Fetamin for ourselves. <clears throat> Fuck does Kuno care? So uh, North Jamrock. Kuno meant everything north of eight eighty one. The rooster fucked Kuno's words up. Kuno doesn't do south. Doesn't fuck with the mother. Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. What is this? 
trying to be cool with your new asshole. Couldn't always just be a nice to you. You got fucked bad. Now limp after this shit. You better have something. Yeah, real. All right. That's how we split it. I'm keeping it's the, the best books. way. Street way. All right. Tell him. Kuno's got major fuck. Kuno won't. It's hard to see. Hard to. Tick 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 tick. Decision time. Don't give Kuno the royal. Staying with me. You're gonna fuck the Kuno. All right, all right. You fucked the Kuno. Everybody, Kuno got fucked by his pocket pig. Just when we get in our business on, the pig throws it all away. I told you he can't be trusted. I told you. I told you. I told. I told you he'd steal the shit. Relax, see. We got plenty of kilo. Kilo underground in the tree. This ain't about that. This is about you and Kuno. You mismanaged this shit. Now everything is fucked between us. How are you gonna make this up to the Kuno, huh? There is genuine disappointment below the act, sire. And now I will leave the same shit. Fuck right. You can guess. Yeah, that's right. Kuno's dad. Fuck yeah, in a tomb. Yeah. So fuck are you talking to Kuno? Kuno knows it's fucking. You can't fuck with. Yeah. How the fuck are you still alive, pig? What? His fuck right. You got Kuno window. Kuno, Kuno, stop. Fuck are you talking, sad. <laughs> Get your turn. In. Kuno won. <gasps> the fuck? Yeah, we got plans. That didn't. It doesn't. She must repeat it. Use every chance to confirm that version of reality. Kuno doesn't. That will be it with Kuno. Last conversation with him. Should we bang the corpse? I guess we can bang the corpse. It's done. The man is decomposing visibly now. Every hour, he looks less like a creature and more like a pile of intestines. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Let's beg him. All right. I can drive him to processing today, no problem, since we stalled with this. But this does mean I will be gone for the rest of the day. Work on the case, tend to personal matters, try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. Back. Say nothing about boots. The man ponders his cooking Wouldn't utensils mind if I and gives boil some here with you. The man takes another drag of his cigarette and shakes his head, smiling widely. It's not clear whether he un- This industrial- Getting the corpse residue out of these boots is going to require patience, and also a huge pot full of boiling water, soap, and white vinegar. A commercial pot draws your attention. It's very large, gigantic even. 
It could be used to make enough stew to feed an entire city, and also to boil a putrid pair of death boots. Check out the cleaning supplies. There is a variety of soaps and bleaches in the cabinet to the left of the stove. There is also a bottle of white vinegar in the cabinet next to the fridge. It's bad with those boots. Don't be stingy now. Bottle of vinegar in the pot along with the soap. The delicious smells of cheap soap and vinegar waft up from the pot. All right now, chef. Light up the stove and boil them. Add water at the boots to the pot. The strong smell of vinegar forces you to step away from the pot. The water slowly comes to a boil. Strips of polymer fabric and human tissue separate from the lining of the boots. They float to the bubbling surface. Want some more. The boots look cleaner and cleaner. Those bits of human flesh are beginning to look cooked. You can smell it too, just like beef stew. That's it, chef. The boots are as clean as they're going to get. Steam dense with the smell of strange meat disappears into the vent above the stove. Not the flesh steel, examine your new boots. A pair of real beauties. The boots are shiny, hot, and reek of vinegar. Just perfect. Mr. Chef out. I got a breakthrough. The Jamrock Shuffle. In a way, yes, you are treasure hunting. Most officers from Precinct 41 do what is called the Jamrock Shuffle, cracking open containers. Most of them are from Jamrock or Coal City, the poorest parts of Revachol, that also overlap with the network of royal catacombs called Le Royam, just beneath the streets. As children, you would all go underground hoping to find treasure and come back with a rat's tail or a used needle. That playful curiosity must still be in you. Who knows, maybe one day the Orb de Montagne, the Holy Scepter and the Cocaine Skull will all be yours. Find better loot in luck containers. That's nice. Got one spot left. And then the fuck if I know what I'm gonna do. Authority. ceramic sabatons hugging your arches and calves. Surprised at how well they fit, your movements cause tiny little clicks, like dice rolling somewhere far away, as the plates reorient to your motions. I'm not responsible with this, it's just to protect me from harm, not to show up. Yeah. The hardened, vitreous enamel at once sleek and light, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. I want a full suit. It may be a while before you have all the pieces. In the meantime, you should analyze the armor. Figure out its vulnerabilities. Remember, this is a highly specialized kinetic redistributor meant to stop bullets. Wear it. Observe its properties. See if there's a weakness in the design. For the day you have to fight someone covered in the same material. Unlock. Turn the 
they're in the lies. I got them all so far. Can I switch them now? Let me go here. Starting from this. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of store is this, anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. What is a book? That is a book. They have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. What's a postcard? A postcard is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. It's a board game. Board games are like little games on a table made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? Is it okay if I ask you some
Nobody actually looks like the guy in the picture. That stupid fantasy of a man. She looks at Dick Mullen, frowning. He isn't even drawn right. Not even draw a human shoulders where the perspective is all wrong. She examines the picture, trying to find whatever is wrong with it. She then shrugs and puts the book aside. Can do it way better than Dick Mullen. Sure you can, sir. He's just a fictional character. He'll be no match for you. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. Please, work. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? Why do you keep your hands folded? What do you mean, sir? I'm here to help. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? Yep. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. You figure out why you bite your nails. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. Uptight because of your mother and the pressure she's putting on you. Chewing on nails means you're recycling your body material. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. It was okay, sir. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. Do better than you something about me. You're quite sober. I'm also sad that my head hurts. I'm sorry, sir. I hope things get better soon. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar. Somehow, there's something you're missing. Let's give it a shot at my work. Detective, you have absolute. Of course not. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you? You have absolutely. Give me a break. It's forty-two. Come on. Ace Detective. Because you know each other. She's been talking to you so openly because you've talked before. So you know me? Yes, I stand in this spot all the time. You've been running around all week without your shirt on, sir. Apologizing to everyone. I don't really understand what you've done wrong. Ever talk to you? Of course, you've stopped by a few times.
I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. Fame is for vain people. Okay, sir. And you, can we do something with your husband now? <clears throat> My husband? No, he's not. She told me you have a husband. Excuse me? A bad husband? Do policemen just go around repeating what some kid off the street said? She seems very mature for her age. Is she now? Annette's a sweet sprout, but she doesn't know anything about marriage. Why am I even talking about this? So you don't have a bad husband? No, I don't. I have a good husband. A kind and helpful sort. And he's not me. Okay, if you want it the like woman. that, don't give a fuck. I can easily say after I'm done with this building that I did everything there is for this part of the map. Fascist magic. A sulfur crested cockatoo sits on the cover, its beak slightly open. It looks as if the bird is calling out the book title From A to Zurich. A guide to a well-behaved cockatoo. It's a must-have if you own a cockatoo. I've heard they're quite capricious. You can steal the guide to cockatoos. Flip through the page. Turns out that there are so many different cockatoo species, and they all have behavioral problems. You don't have behavioral problems. That's garbage. You're cool. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. And you see a large here. variety of names. I would say, The Greatest Innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. Certainly, it's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of these seem important or relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love. The tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. 
Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality, Guillaume Bevy, stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. I would say... The Greatest Innocence. A vet. The book is also very daring. Perhaps... Do her words seem vague and abstract to you? Certainly. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. Let's try to steal this one. A sulfur crested cockatoo sits slowly. <sighs> A sulfur crested cockatoo sits. You wait for the storekeeper to be distracted. When she's not looking, you haul the tome of cockatoos into your pocket. It's quite a challenge, but eventually, the guide to the cockatoos is yours. Splendid effort. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. Rabbi, I told you a million times, I think. GM is the worst sport there is. I mean, bodybuilding. It takes 15 years to get to somewhere and only 5 months to ruin all of those 15 years. Basically, one of the most ungrateful sports. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is Lacayu. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantôme, Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. I loved lifting when I was younger. As the time went by, after like 15 years in a gym, I reached one point, all right, where I get around 100 kilograms of muscle with like 10% body fat, which is very low body fat. I was huge. In other words, and no matter what I did for the next year or two, I couldn't get bigger nor I couldn't get stronger. That there were there were two options, all right. The first option was to quit, and the second option was steroids, all right, classical steroids, testosterone, and similar bullshit. Uh, considering that I like myself more than the muscle, all right? I mean, my health was more important to me. So I, I could went for bloody steroids, be even bigger. I could reach like, I don't know, 120, 130 kilograms. What for? To destroy my liver? And you can't go on freaking steroids for your entire life. Then when you stop, consequences can be huge. And there are very few people that lived more than 50 years, 60 years after abusing steroids. Average lifetime for bodybuilders that used all of the chemicals. I, I can't remember exactly. I think their average lifetime is 42 or 43 years. That's when they die, mostly. There are a lot of people that died also from 20s to 30s and so on from the abuse of steroids and similar bullshit. So for me, it was an easy choice. I just stopped. First, I got tired of lifting weights. Second, I, I really don't want to push anymore. 
it was I was already bored, you know. And I kinda love myself more and my health more than the actual muscle. It doesn't matter how big you get, you're gonna get to the one point and then there is no forward if you don't wanna risk your health. That's why it's the most ungrateful sport. Disintegrating into mathematics. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. It's like similar uh, with other addictions, okay? Like, I don't know what to compare with bodybuilding. And when you inject your first steroid, right? They don't know when to stop and they die. Same as with tattoos. You get one tattoo, you get the other one, third one, fifth one. After you got 25 tattoos on your skin, you don't even count them anymore. You just go on and paint your entire body. All right. Uh, for women, for example, it's plastic surgery. That's the most popular thing in the last 10 years. They go like, and they do their tits or they do a nose. And then they do their eyebrows, then they do their mouths, then they raise their skin, you know, then they make those cat eyes, then, then they do implants in their asses, then they extract fat from their waists, okay, from the stomach. I don't know, then, then they do those, what do they call them in English, God damn it, hair extensions, all right, it never ends. It's a freaking loop that just repeats and repeats and repeats. Their health is worse. They look better, but their health is getting worse and worse and worse. And psyche also, they are destroying themselves like that only because of some stupid Instagram picture or whatever, you know, like it freaking matters. We're going to go two meters under the ground. And you got plenty of examples like that. It just depends on the addiction, all right? Same bullshit for drugs, for alcohol, for everything. It's a freaking addiction. And that counts also for the gym. <sighs> you can, on Caillou, Rivershaw, a single black star, on Ozone, Fondelier, and Vimandu, on Archipelagos, Croyan Moran. Villiers, on Seminine, Oldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the North Azimuth, Grad is the Northeast Azimuth, Samara is the East Azimuth. Seo is the West Azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Incelindium are known to you. You only know you've never been there. You see, Rabbi, that's also wrong. You can never be comfortable with your body. There's two ways. You can live for it. Or you can go with I don't give a fuck. Those two. But being comfortable, no. It's just a question if you give a fuck about it or not. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars. Gods. But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Perhaps they are gods, gods of distance and outer dust. I don't show. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershaw East. Kudon, 
It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. It's, it's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. So it's the worst. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. Martinez. It's not really a map. It's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. It's different, it's a different feeling. Completely different game with voice acting. Still, it's detailed. Could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of an industrial harbor, even the whirling in rags there. I buy these maps. I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Why is Martinez so cheap? That old thing. It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. They also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. It would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. I'll try to steal it. Several map the maps look old and faded. You peek at the stalky, nice. waiting for her to be distracted. When she's not looking, you deftly rip the map off the bulletin board and pocket it. You're now the proud owner of a map of Martinez, which, to be honest, did not even cost that much. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. It serves platitudes, while also telling everyone that traditional medicine the kind people don't have access to, and which costs more than this book, is garbage, and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. We're, let's say, in the same boat, but it's gonna be freaking bad too. I know. Wholeness, unity. Balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything. Though it is important to note, when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Did the book say anything else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. And... There's even a chapter on the ancient Serais tradition of using duck gallbladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not for free. I can't have you end up like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no!
These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. A couple of spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes of the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of all the books found on the shelf? Yeah. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Get Me Mullen. <laughs> the stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. The sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. <laughs> Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. <laughs> Dauntless Dick. Dauntless Dick, Dick Mullen's funeral pyre. <laughs> the murder of Dick Mullen. Uh, Dick Mullen dies. Oh no. Turns out he fated to solve a case. Uh, anymore. Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, <laughs> my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. <laughs> a dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen, another one with fake death, and, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become the murderer. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? <laughs> I can't imagine. Who is Shelves Dick Mullen? Fill to the brim with your quick eye notices a small caterpillar crawling across the spine of a book. The title reads, Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. A worn paperback from Dick Mullen's classic hard-boiled phase. The premise seems to be that Dick Mullen is framed for the murder of his best friend and has just a few days to prove his innocence. Could it be the motifs of unstable identities and shocking betrayals? Perhaps you're drawn to the dark and noirish atmosphere. Is it because the smoking dame in the slinky red dress on the cover is giving you a hard on? That's definitely it. Yeah, this is the book for you. <laughs> See the way she's suggestively holding that pistol? That's symbolism. Oh my god. I got it right there. Crime, robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. <laughs> Dick Mullen. What will I play first? What comes out first? I'll play that one first. I can't wait to see the King's Bounty. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. An endless variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velcrag. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books?
There's a box that says, we're our third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. That price is steep, but then it's the third edition mega setting supplement. So it makes sense. Nonsense for anemic Beano clouds. Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda, a very educational game for those interested in geography. Raubritter is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. Look at me. Who would want to have children with me? <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself, sir. You just need to clean up a bit. And technically, friends are a bit like family. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. Brutally colonize. <laughs> oh, we're so fucked up as a species, man. Everything is fucked up. Lousy auras there. No, role-playing games are popular among those types. You know, who are into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. That they have rituals where they try to summon entities. Highly immoral stuff. You can still buy them, though. Not all playing for. There's the last one. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyamdal somewhere. Rows and rows of Hyamdala men blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hyamdal and the Mammoth Riders. Man from Hyamdal, Return to Hyamdal. <laughs> and the Solipsistic. Man from Hyomdal and the Hyomdal Man. <laughs> Maybe a hundred. Man from Hyomdal and the Sages at the End of the World. Man from Hyomdal and the False God. Man from Hyomdal and the Scorched Earth. Man from Hyomdal, the Hyomdal Colonies. Man from Hyomdal and the Swamp Beast. Man from Hyomdal and the Snow Crabs. Not even close. Man from Hyomdal in hell. Man from Hyomdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hyomdal under the lake. Man from Hyomdal, Hyomdal burning. There's even the trial of death, a pastoral combat game book set in the world of Hyomdal man, and so much more. Mountains of it, heroic quantities of Hyomdal. Roy's puny shirt is nothing compared to the real deal. This to me sounds like Ubisoft Assassin's Creed. <sighs> or even better Call of Duty. The display rack is brimming with worn paper but nothing of interest. Like I'm on the troll. The display rack is brimming with nothing of interest. The display rack is brimming with a twinge at the back of your head makes you flinch. Your eye starts twitching. Your hand reaches toward a book with glossy cover art of the very muscular man from Hyomdal in chains, kneeling in front of a staircase leading to a throne. A woman sits on the throne, leering at the man. 
Between the throne and the Hyundala man lies a bonfire, casting shadows on the wall. The shadow of the woman's headdress looks like a pair of devil horns. The title reads, Man from Hyundal and the Devil Woman. An old woman, devil woman. Especially those leering types who seem to wear nothing but an armored bikini. Armored bikini. Some sort of a snake lizard beast slithering around her abdomen, chest, shoulder region. It's symbolic of vice and sin. The display rack before you is burdened under piles of Man from Hyundal novels. Eventually, we'll need to buy all of those books and read them, but not now. So, she's left. Jesus Christ, so many tasks. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Certainly there are good things to be said about dependence. You misunderstood me. I'm a powerful feudal lord. I demand tribute. This is about traditions. Now, hey there. Sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into this space. Tribute? Power? These are not the traditions we're used to in this part of the world. You're the owner. I am! The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. What if I want to buy a book? Goodness! You were already doing good browsing okay, well, the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go! Go! Get back there. The books await you. Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? She's attempting to mentally direct you towards the shelves. She only wants you to buy the goods. She doesn't care about the books. Do you even know what books you have for sale? Truth be told, not really. My sister brings in most of the goods. I'm sure it's all very literary stuff with well-written prose. But you don't learn about the important things in life from fabricated stories. Shouldn't the storekeeper know about her wares? I provide a valuable service. As long as people buy books, I'm fine. The truth is available if you just know where to look, and you have to open and free your mind to understand. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Let us see the breakthrough. River Sholian Nationhood. The Revisholian state will be a serene place. You should get a drink. A beautiful serene place of mystery and peace. It will not be a place for women to infect with their frailty and hysterics, or where the Seminese will be allowed to wear their pants around their ankles. All of that will go once you get a drink. The socialist professors at the Ecole Supérieure will be fired. The editors of Trong Le Mon will have to beg in the streets. You'll pour beer into their begging hats and laugh. You should get a beer. Bonus when you drink alcohol. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biography. The girl also mentioned the place people. is cursed. Annette? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yeah. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yeah. Great. 
On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? I'm not gonna create a human being, I don't do that. Come now, it's not personal. Fuck. It's about proper sales practices and market ten. research. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. How much do you pay the kid? Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Such criminal behavior would not happen in more developed countries. Child labor and slavery. Those countries will realize they've raised a lazy and spoiled generation. Are we done with the jokes now? Are you aware she's been chewing her nails off? God, ugh. I've told her not to do that. It's such a disgusting habit. She'll get over it. Anxiety is a part of life. You don't say. She can, if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Make an exception for your daughter. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. This is a person coming to terms with a new reality, one where they are wrong. It's not easy. She's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. Oh no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. Is this husband and that's father? Yes. My husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. Soon we'll both be off for Grand Caron. It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead.